Hey guys, so this video is going to be about the image evaluation of a wrist. When you take a picture of the wrist, you want to make sure that you have the entire wrist joint. So I'm just going to click on here and start making notes. This is the most important part of the wrist. But when you also are doing a wrist, um, we're also wanting to look at the metacarpals. And then also this is the ulna and the radius. In my Merrill's Atlas, it says that you would usually like to have about 2.5 inches above the wrist area and below the wrist area. And then like one inch on the sides so that you can see everything nicely. This is a picture of the PA wrist. So this right here is a scaphoid. This right here is the lunate because it's supposed to shape, be shaped like a like a little moon, like a lunar crescent moon. Um, right here is the triquetrum, and then the pisiform is kind of on top of it. And then if you go over here to the other side, right here is the trapezium. This one right here is a trapezoid. This one right here is the capitate, and this one right here is the hamate, and then right here is the hook of hamate. So that's what you are supposed to see on every single PA um, wrist x-ray. For the oblique, you want it to be at like a 45 degree angle. So sort of like the hand, you kind of know that it's like angled correctly if it's, if these bones are kind of over each other and then this bone's kind of separate. There's also a slight overlapping of the um, of the radius and the ulna right here. And then also um, you get a really pretty good view of the, um, the trapezoid and the distal half of the scaphoid. So like right here. The other part is kind of like covered right here. So you get a good view of this area right here. For the oblique view of the wrist. The lateral view, it's very, very particular. The most important thing that you really, really, really want to do is make sure that the radius and the ulna are totally superimposed over each other. Um, and sometimes it's not going to be like totally perfect, but you want it to be as close, um, as close and as superimposed as possible. It's really challenging, especially when you're like x-raying little kids, because it's not a very natural position when you're positioning the patient to do this. A lot of the times people under rotate. So um, a lot of the times it'll be like the ulna is like right here and like the radius will be kind of more like kind of more on like in front uh, just because um, it's so uncomfortable for the patient to to do. So it is a challenging view sometimes. And then you also want all of the metacarpals to be as superimposed on each other. And you can see it's like basically totally superimposed on each other. But um, the lateral view is really so that um, you can see any dislocation anteriorly or posteriorly. And you wanna make sure that the thumb is like out of the way and not like overlapping uh, like the rest of these metacarpals right here. So the thumb just needs to be kind of out of the way. So that is the image eval of the lateral view of the wrist. Sometimes the providers will order a four view wrist. So a three view wrist is usually just composed of the, the PA, oblique, and the lateral. Sometimes people just order like a two view wrist, which would be a PA and a lateral. And then some people order a four view. And then usually this is what is the four view. The fourth view. This fourth view is the scaphoid, the scaphoid view, because um, the scaphoid is a very important bone. This one right here, it's the most frequently fractured carpal bone. Um, so it's and also it's really bad if it does get fractured because you run the risk of getting some like necrosis and dying of the bone. So it's very very important. So a lot of the times, the providers um, will order this extra view. The reason why we do it is uh, to get the scaphoid not superimposed on anything, and that's the most important part. Um, so you'll have to do ulnar deviation, which means that you will put your hand 
instead of totally flat on the IR, you need to kind of deviate your hand over towards the pinky side, and then you have an angle of the tube that is 10 to 15 degrees towards your elbow instead of being perpendicular. And then you also need to make sure that you are kind of centering kind of in the snuff box area, like the base of the thumb. And that's the last view of a wrist.